They don't make these for big handed people. Oh, <laughs> don't do what this guy just did. We're Brad and Jazz, and this is our 2015 long wheelbase Mercedes Sprinter. And this year we will be turning this empty cargo van into an off-grid luxury motorhome. Welcome back to the channel. Today we thought we were going to be installing our gas hot water system, but there's actually a few things that we need before we can start that project. So instead today we are starting pre-wiring our electrical. Before I get too far into this video, I just wanted to say a lot of people will actually put their insulation in before they put in their electrics, which is absolutely fair enough. We're kind of doing things backwards because we're waiting for a lot of bits and pieces to come. And it's not going to make a huge difference to us. We're going to try and make it accessible as possible. So I just wanted to throw that in there before we get into this video. Okay, so we're going to be installing 12 volt and also 240 volt here in Australia in our van, which means we're going to have to have an inverter. So we have two different size cables and conduit because everything I've read in Australia, when you're running 240 volt, you do need to have it in conduit. So we've got our four mil twin here and our twin and earth here, which is our 240 volt. What we're gonna do is we're gonna locate all the spots where we want this gear, start running the cables, and then we will actually hook it all up later in the build. So this is just us installing all the wiring before we get into the insulation. Down in this back corner is where we plan to have all of our electrical and battery set up. So we're going to be running all of these cables labelled on both ends with what it hooks up to. They will all end here and run to the point in the van where we will need to hook it up. The plan is to have a fuse box up in the upper cabinetry here so we'll be having all of our 12 volt run into there. So I've actually drawn out a little bit of a plan where all our 12 volt and 240 is going to go. So we're just going to go around and mark all the spots we actually want it to be just with some duct tape and then we know where exactly we're going to run the wires to. We've also already got some spots we need to run wiring to like both our max air fans so their 12 volt will come across to here as well probably running along the edge of this and then when we cover it all up you won't even see it i'm going to start everything off with the 12 volt because that's going to be the easiest for us to sort out what we've done is marked off a few locations so this one here is going to be where our switchboard is and then these little marks here for like our fans uh, so we know where they're going to sit now, that, this is probably a really hard step in any van build because you kind of need to plan it out in your head where all your power points are going to go, all your bits and pieces, your pump for your water are going to be. So we've actually drawn out a little step-by-step -step of where we need to put everything and we're going to label everything as we go so we don't get lost in the build. So we actually bought one of these uh, wire runners from Bunnings. It was like 20 bucks, I think. It's going to come in super handy when we're trying to get in between all these little nooks and crannies. So you don't have to buy one of these, you can try and run it with like a normal coat hanger, but something like this gives you a little bit more extra length and it's gonna be a lot easier for us to actually run the cable. Okay, we've got these little grommets right here. They're just a rubber grommet. And what I'm gonna do is slide this up this cord and put it against this metal here because that's gonna stop the cable rubbing out. You can see that we already cut it when we're pulling it through. That's okay because that end's gonna get cut off. But we don't want that to happen when we're actually installing this or driving along. So just put that grommet there, that's going to stop any cuts on the actual wire and give us a lot more protection around the actual 12 volt right there. So we fed that all the way through. What we're going to do is we're going to cut these with some side cutters. We're going to leave a little bit more extra length so that if we need to make any changes or adjust this position, we can actually do it rather than having to rerun it again. So I'm just going to cut probably an extra two to three foot on that uh, and give us a little bit of play. And then we're just going to label that one rear max air fan and it's ready to go. Okay, we've got pretty much all the 12 volt done on this side of the vents. So we're starting on one side and then getting over to the other. We've just labeled each and every one so that we know when we're actually trying to connect them up what they go to. And then this will run to the fuse box with different fuse sizes depending on the rating that we need it to cover. And then hopefully everything will fit in properly and we won't have any issues. So this is the start. We have just run three wires over the top here through this guttering. And then, well actually this guttering right here, down the side. And those are gonna go to our water pump, our fridge, and also our hot water system. All right, we're almost done with the 12 volt. We just need to run the lighting for the top. And then we will be onto the 240 volt. So we can run the 240, but we can't actually connect anything up. So um, we'll run that and then we'll get someone to actually sign it off for us. A professional. So we've just very dodgily put up the <laughs> eight loops for the puck lights that are gonna go in, just long enough to reach all the way back here. So that's worked out fine. Obviously we'll make it a lot neater once we actually get to it, but we just measured that out and that'll be our last 12 volt thing. So we're probably gonna run a couple extras 
um, just in case we want to put extra stuff in later on. Yeah. That way we've got those wires, we don't need to get back into the wall cavity to actually run them. All right, we bought some 20 mil conduit. This is the Flexi conduit. And I did buy probably more than we're gonna need, um, but at least we'll have plenty on hand. I think we're gonna have about four 240 volt outlets in this van, uh, two for the kitchen and then two for the back of the van when we wanna charge like our um, cameras and phones and whatnot. So I think that should be enough and that should cover the van. I might run an extra one again for if we want to upgrade in the future. So we're going to probably run this conduit down to this area just here and where our batteries and that's going to be because our inverter will probably run straight off that. So I'll probably connect it all down to that bottom there as best I can. Obviously we'll have insulation and boarding all the top over the top of this so you won't see any of this once everything is boxed in but you just want to make it nice and neat so you're not putting screws through it later on as well. Um, so we'll get onto that. Before we go any further I just want to point out here you need a 50 mil gap between your 240 and your 12 volt. I didn't know that before running but luckily we haven't connected anything so we can shift stuff around. I'm pretty sure in most bases we've left that gap anyway so we're quite lucky there. So it's only five centimeters just make sure you're doing that as well. So I'm just gonna see if I can get it through this pillar here because uh, there's already holes there and that way I don't need to sort of get it on the outside of the van and give us a bit more room when we're putting the cladding in that on. I think it's gonna work, so I'll probably try and go in through here, pop out this hole back here, drop it down over the back wheel there, and I think that'll sit quite well, because we're gonna need one on this side, one here, and then two on the other side. So if we were the same on the other side, we should be spot on. They don't make these for big handed people. It's quite tight. It's not fitting. Oh, looky here. We got it. I need one minor cut. <laughs> Injury. So we've come in through here and it's going all the way along the inside of the van out to there. Probably not the right tool for the job, but uh, the second tier uh, cutting my conduit for me. It did it. Yeah, we're leaving a big tail on that because we're not exactly sure where the 240 volts going to go in this area. But essentially that's going to reach to pretty much anywhere there, so it should be pretty safe. So the idea now is we'll hook this up to our little snake that we bought, push it through, and it should go through nice and cleanly. And that means this will stay nice and safe and don't get cut when we're pushing it through these sharp edges. Update, we might not actually need to use the snake at all, or as I like to call it, the coat hanger tool. That's stuck. Ah. Too soon, huh? Alright, we've fed this all the way through, so that's come all the way out and over to Jazzy's end. Now we will be able to pull the cord through for the 240 and then we will be done for this side. We're just cutting off. We could pretend that went through easy, but uh, it actually took a little <laughs> bit of jiggling. <laughs> yeah, we've got there in the end. It's pretty tight. I don't think we're going to get too through it, so we'll have to run another one. But it's in there and it's cut. So that's one done. Woo. All right, passenger side 240 is pretty much done. Done. <laughs> Just done the last label. We are terrible at not eating when we're doing construction. So make sure you eat when you're doing this. And then we just have a couple more drill on this side and we're done. Oh, <laughs> don't do what this guy just did. I don't really know how this just got in such a tangle, but. Oh my goodness. Not ideal toward the end of the day as you can see it's getting a bit dark in here and we are trying feeding it through the conduit before we've actually installed it you're working a lot better <laughs> yeah, it's working pretty good he's like a uh, fishing for some 240 volt cable but it's all through we were just nearly finished the very last one when we literally looked at each other and said what's this one for again so we're gonna call it a night. We're gonna wrap this up in the morning. See you then. We finished up pretty late last night. I'm not sure how the footage turned out because it's getting pretty dark, but essentially you can see behind me that a lot of the cords are still dangling. So what we're gonna do today, tidy everything up, stick it all together and make it flush against the van so that when we do put on the actual insulation that we don't have to move stuff around too much and do too much playing around. So I'm starting to sort of bundle all these together just to keep them nice and neat. I'm also going around and adding a little bit of electrical tape just to all these sort of potentially sharp edges. I just don't want it to rub on any of it. So I'm doing that to pretty much all of them just to protect it. Just so long term I don't have to come back in and try and fix it up. Hey, we're looking a lot more tidier now, which is awesome. I've taped up all these bits and pieces here along here. Obviously this is just temporary because that's going to go to a spot once that's set up. But it is looking a lot better. I've tightened up the top lights so they don't hang so low. 
So we're pretty much done. All right, that's it for the running of the electrical cable. Obviously, we've got to hook up all the inverters and stuff when we get that, but we've run all the pre-stuff so that when we do the insulation, it's already there and we don't need to worry about it. Thanks for watching. I'm not sure what's next because we're still <laughs> waiting on the shower, which is holding us up on a lot of things. It's holding us up on the flooring, yep. holding us up on Hot installing water the gas. system. Yeah. So hopefully that gets here within <laughs> the next week or two. Thanks for watching. Make sure you hit that subscribe button because I noticed that there's a lot of people who aren't subscribed that have been watching. Yep. And we will see you next time on Brad and Jazz. Bye for now.